Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look and see how they determine the various luminosity classes. We may, we may wonder how they determine the difference between a main sequence star and a, red, and, a, and a giant star when the colors are the same. For example, we may have an M-class star, it could be a main sequence star, it could be a red giant, how do we tell the difference? Well, it turns out that they may both have the same surface temperature, and they may both have the same color, but the density of the gases in the outer layers of the stars are very different. A red giant is enormous in size, and the layers on the outside, where the photosphere is, where you can see the surface of the star, they're very tenuous. So we have very low density, low pressure gases in, at the surface. So we have low pressure, and we have low density, and the result of that is that the signature in the spectral lines is much less pronounced than when we have stars like on the main sequence where we have high pressure and high density. Of course, that is relative because at the photosphere of even, of even uh, main sequence stars, the uh, gases are not very dense compared to what we're used to with atmospheric pressure here. But in comparison to the giant stars, the density and the pressure is much higher. So we have high density and high pressure, relatively speaking, at the surface of stars on the main sequence relative to subgiants, giants, or supergiants. So high density and high pressure. So we're actually able to see the difference in the pronunciation of the, the uh, what we call the missing lines, the missing colors, the spectral uh, lines that are missing in the in the rainbow of colors coming from the stars. Now, the reason why those colors are missing is as the photons are trying to escape the star, trying to make it through the outer layers, and of course, a lot of the uh, elements, a lot of the uh, material in the star is, is hydrogen. You can see that hydrogen has a single proton and has all the various, uh, what we call, energy levels that the electron can be at. And as the photons stream through the outer layer of the atmosphere or the outer layer of the star, the photons collide with the electrons and cause those electrons to jump up to higher levels, thus absorbing photons of very specific wavelengths and color. For example, when a, when a photon comes in and hits an electron at the second energy level and causes it to jump up to the third level, it will absorb a red color wavelength of 656.3 nanometers, so that's color simply absorbed. If a photon hits it with the exact amount of energy and causes it to jump to the uh, third level, right, or I should say fourth level right here, then it absorbs kind of a blue-greenish color, and that color is missing. If a photon comes along with the right energy and hits an electron in the second level, causing up to jump to the fifth level, it absorbs a purple color. And then if a photon comes along, hits electron in the second level, causes up to jump to the, the sixth energy level, again it absorbs a purplish UV uh, type of um, color. And so those are simply absorbed, and those then show up as missing lines on the color spectrum of stars. Now here we have what we call the H gamma line and the H delta line. The H gamma line corresponds to an electron jump from the second level to the fifth level, and an H delta line corresponds to an electron jump from the second level to the sixth level. So those two lines simply would be gone. Those would then be purple colors. They would be gone, and you see a, a black line, but for the high... Uh, for the um, giants and, and supergiants, those missing lines are very thin and tenuous. They're not very pronounced. For main sequence stars, they're very thick and very pronounced. For stars of the very same color. So as the lines become thinner and thinner and thinner, we can then imagine that these are higher and higher luminosity classes. So from the main sequence being class 5, we have the subgiants, class 4, giants, class 3. And then we have the, the uh, luminous giants, uh, which are, or the bright giants as we call it, which is class 2, and then the very luminous or luminous supergiants, class 1a and class 1b. And so therefore, we can subdivide that in those various luminosity classes just simply by looking at the spectrum and see how pronounced those various lines are for stars of that particular color. color. Of course, we also know that they vary uh, according to their spectral class, but we have to differentiate between the variation due to change in the pressure and density of the gas at the surface versus change in the temperature of the surface as the stars get hotter and hotter as we go from M-class stars, stars all the way up to O-class stars. But we're able to do that, and from that, we're able to determine what type of luminosity class we're looking at, and therefore we're able to place the stars we're looking at exactly on the ATAR diagram as they should be based upon the determination of the luminosity classes 
based upon the, pronoun the pronunciation, I should say, or how well the, the uh, spectral lines are, um, are, are visible on the spectrum. And that's how we do that.